even if you froze all his money, he has friends that have access to private planes. Um, and so even with a leg monitor, right? We all have heard stories of people cutting off their leg monitors and disappearing for at least days. And so here you have a man who can cut a leg monitor off, hop on a plane and leave the country. And he has the financial resources to do it as well. And he has the financial resources to take care of himself, even if he decided to come back. So once they got their hands on him, they're not going to let him go. He's in jail now. It's been, I think, two weeks now. Uh, about two weeks. Has it been? It feels like it's been two weeks now. Two, two. Yeah, it's been two weeks. When you, when we did it, I was in New York. Very true. Very true. Um, and let's just start with what's going on currently, and then we'll work our way around the situation. But um, it's reported that a Diddy has allegedly uh, denied a plea deal, and his lawyer is going to continue, of course, have his day in trial. Um, can you explain how that normally works? If a plea deal is normally a one and done, is it something that could be negotiated? Can you go back and forth? Um, and how many plea deals may even be offered prior to trial? Like, just, you know, just if any. Hundreds. Oh. Yeah, we, we can negotiate this thing on and on and on. And so, like a lot of times, people don't understand that they say, my lawyer went to court, they reset it, nothing happened. Yeah, something happened. Somebody went in the back room. The prosecutor and the defense attorney talked. Prosecutor either said, hey, I'm steadfast on this. This is what we want out of it. Defense attorney's like, no. They go their separate ways. Next time, same thing. Defense attorney says, well, we may be able to assist you with this, or this may be an outcome. Would you think about this? Now that the, the prosecutor is like, okay, talk to you next setting. And so sometimes you can have those settings keep going back and forth and until you get to a point. I once had a trial between me and the prosecutor in a back room. And we literally, no jury, no one but us, but we were just kind of like a gentleman's agreement. Right. And so we just went back and forth and I knew I knew the prosecutor. We went back and forth until we got to a point where we both said, OK. I think we've kind of met somewhat in the middle. And. This as far as I'm going, this as far as you're going to get and you can take this back to your client. And it was a good deal for my client uh, at the at the time, because truth be known, we were probably at a 70, 30, with 70 being more favorable to the prosecution uh, as far as the evidence concerned. I always like to give myself uh, a 15 point credit where I can pull back that. But still, even if I did that, we were still behind the eight ball, mm -hmm. right? And But that's kind of where we, we played it at, at basically a 45, 55 situation where they squeaked out a win and probably would never get to where they wanted to get to as far as punishment. And so I know that I developed a reputation during the punishment stage that my closings beat the, uh, the initial offer. So with the Diddy situation, they're probably going to go back and forth for some time. Um, Diddy is not going to, I'm sorry, Sean Combs is not going to just throw all his eggs up front. He's going to piecemeal it to the prosecution and wear them down and show them that their case is not as strong as they think it is, that some of these victims are not victims at all. They're just people of opportunity. And then he'll just keep wearing that down until they can get to something that they're comfortable with. So you saw, um, again, you when you spoke on this, uh, we didn't know what, an indictment was going to be, but then the indictment came down, they unsealed it, show what it was. Now you as an attorney, do you feel like uh, the federal government has a strong case? 
when it comes to the criminal matter of what's going on outside of the freaky nature? Yeah, by all means, man. I mean, most people are definitely afraid to even walk into a federal courthouse. Yes. Yes. Big boys. Jurors are afraid. Everybody's in awe. So that's advantage federal government, right? The evidence and the public perception that they currently have is strong as well. And I'm going to go ahead and correct myself. Cassie was beaten because I got... Well, there was Cassandra. I don't know what you called her. What would you say? Nah, I'm not saying that. I mean, we don't I'm not say saying that again. I'm not saying that again. So uh, to the two or three people who corrected me on the name, I, I'm, I left it alone. I apologize. Boy, they picky, but, boy. Hey, you know what? But you know what? Call me out. Yeah. If you see something and I see it, if I'm wrong, I, if I see it, I'll chime in. Or if I feel like I'm not wrong, I'll chime in and explain why I said what I said. So I have no problem communicating with uh, your viewers. Yeah. So, yes, no, as you stated, uh, Cassie, um, the thousand bottles of baby oil, which is not illegal. Again, it's not illegal. But is, pub- it? is it not? It, man, listen. Is it not? If, if is you, it flammable? It's flammable. <laughs> No, I'm just asking. Uh, physically or metaphysically? Like, what are we talking about? Because <laughs> it could go both ways. <laughs> uh, I don't want to know about the metaphysical <laughs> part of that. But, but, but no, I mean, that much of anything, quite honestly, uh, if it could be used to make a bomb, chances are you're not supposed to have that. But it's, easy defense. Hey, we like having oil parties, uh, bathtubs full of oil. And slip and slide. Is it a fix? To me, that's an easy. That's an easy. Is it easy fix. Yeah, it's, I mean, don't say. Move that. on to the next question. Don't say that. Don't say. No, that. it's like we you have. Know, we literally have baby oil wrestling nights. You know why you don't want? Is to that say, illegal? It's illegal in the context of yes. how Sean Combs uses. It. So you don't want to say that. <laughs> okay. So don't if Sean Combs. If you see this. Joker should not be your attorney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, That's why I did not pass the bar. Because <laughs> statements like that are going to get you sent straight. They're going to be like, we don't even need a jury. Just listen. Your, this is your cell right here. This is your cell. You don't want to say that. But he has to explain that. His lawyer has to explain it. Well, and, and watch this. Man, sometimes keeping it simple is the best thing. I look at the statutes of this state, and that's not illegal. Leave it at that. Don't be trying to explain. Right. I, I was just gonna say, should his lawyer even be talking? This is my thing. Like I, I think every time he opens his mouth, it just hurts him a little bit more. Man, it is. I I, I really don't know. Uh, what his end game? Is. Yeah, because like, he, if he loses the case, he looks like. The worst lawyer, <laughs> you don't want to go with him either. Like, he should just stay quiet, right? That just... It just depends, right? So let's say, for example, I'm representing you. Right. And you're in jail, so you can't do any uh, interviews. You can't get before the news. So I'll sit down with you and say, okay, I'm going to take your wife and kids, and we're going to do two interviews a week. And this is going to be the message that we're getting out there. Something totally and separate and far away from what you've been accused of and something that's true so that the, the, so that the viewers right. and potential jurors see you in a, a different light other than this monster that the media is currently yeah, painting. Like, where is this publicist, I would say? Or, yeah, like, but, what, what's going on? Like, you could easily paint a different... Narrative, you're Diddy. Anything that they feed us, we're going to eat it up. So why is he not? Why is this lawyer only one speaking? Well, no. No, no, no. <laughs> no, one, is, no one is guilty until uh, a, a group of their peers labeled as a jury have found them guilty unless they decide to go before a judge and have a bench trial. But they have to go through the system before they're considered guilty. And so his lawyer might be the only one up there right now. I haven't really followed his statements of his lawyer, um, but his I've seen some interviews. But you know, his 
it seems like he's mostly attacking the federal government's case, but not in a way that anyone is, I think, is really resonating right now with anyone. Yeah, so he did an uh, interview with TMZ where uh, TMZ has a, a whole documentary on Tubi called Diddy, The Downfall of Diddy, The Indictment. And uh, Harvey is literally talking to him about the baby oil. And like you said, he kept it as simple as like, like when the, from my knowledge, baby oil isn't illegal. So he says this with Harvey. But I'm like, why aren't you saving, like, is he trying to win back the court of public opinion in his statements? Because I'm like, why aren't you saving these things for your day in trial? Versus Because part of what makes, what makes the prosecution feel as strongly as they do is that they read those comments. They see how the public feels about something. And if the public feels so strongly about something, then they're not inclined necessarily to make you a deal. Excuse me. But if there is an issue with the, uh, with the case and public opinion starts to wane, you might be more inclined to, to entertain that. How chilling or bad does evidence have to be for them not to let you out on a $50 million bond? Well, I said it before. Uh, the interview when I they we asked they asked me in New York. They're not going to let him out simply because of he's a flight risk. And the judge basically said the same thing. This guy has access to private planes. Even if you froze all his money, he has friends that have access to private planes. Um, and so, even with a leg monitor. Right. We all have heard stories of people cutting off their leg monitors and disappearing for at least days. And so here you have a man who can cut a leg monitor off, hop on a plane and leave the country. And he has the financial resources to do it as well. And he has the financial resources to take care of himself, even if he decided to come back. So once they got their hands on him, they're not going to let him go. And I knew that before. They even had his arraignment and talked about providing him a bond. So it really didn't have nothing to do with the evidence. I mean, the evidence is, is horrific, but when you start looking at giving people bonds, right? If Let's say, for example, let's get off of Combs, Sean Combs, and let's talk about, we've been talking about drunk drivers a lot, uh, or even a murder suspect. You get someone who you got in who has murdered someone, and you want to put them on bond, but there's a witness or there's someone, there were actually two people that they were after and they only got one of them. Is this someone, or even more importantly, is this someone that he killed who may retaliate against him? And so now you got to run the risk of putting this person back into the general population and someone try to retaliate against him at a Walmart and bystanders get killed, or he had his grandma house, and you know innocent family members get killed, or he attempts or she attempts to, to kill the the last person or the second person. So a judge would most likely say, "No, nah, I'm not letting you out." Yeah, I could I could even see Diddy wanting to do the right thing by getting on bond, leg monitor, but all it takes is a thought process while he's sitting in his mansion saying, "Actually, I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to even go to trial," and. Let me change my mind. Yeah, let's go. Let's hop on a flight. They, they, they want to keep him in jail. Uh, but let me ask you, um, uh, when it comes to back to the attorney speaking and going on doing all this, you know, going on this public uh, 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 rant and raving and telling that his client is innocent and discussing the baby oil and things of that nature and freak offs, does it make it hard for the federal government to pick a jury? Because they have to, they're, they're looking for people who don't know about this case. Who don't hear? Who haven't heard details? Is he trying to make it hard to like, man? Everyone in New York know who Diddy is, so it's going to be hard to even try this case, you know, in the Southern District of New York. We got to go to Wisconsin, or like, is is the lawyer probably trying to make it hard to find the jury a jury selection go through? That's not going to save him. Okay, All that's right. that's that's in a case like this, that's that's not going to save him. And then. Uh, Man, I forgot just that quick, but I wanted to go back to a point on when you were talking about the bond. That's it, the bond. 
if they're unable to get to, but he might have a second chance at a bar. If they're unable to get to trial in a reasonable amount of time and he's been behind jail for so long, his attorney can come back and ask for a bond because either the prosecution hadn't been ready several times, there's a witness that's not available, something that is holding this, this trial up and it would be unjust and inhumane to continue to leave him in jail when he has the opportunity to get out. And so that might come back up as well. In the world of social media uh, detectives and opinions, some are alluding to the idea that um, it does not make sense for the feds to confiscate a thousand dollars, I mean, thousand dollars, thousand bottles of baby oil, and that the baby oil might not be baby oil, that it might be some sort of new drug. Um, what are your thoughts on on that possibility and how some could maybe think that because, like I said, to some people it might not make sense for you to take a thousand bottles of baby oil. You know, since this is entertainment, I'm, I keep my, my personal opinion about that to myself. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, okay. You know, people are free to read whatever they want to read, believe whatever they want to believe, and they're going to do that. But it's not based on facts and so if you're someone who believes and just listening to something and, and taking it in and taking it as true then man go with god uh, but always remind yourself that you could have the rug pulled from under you because it's later found that it's not true and i think one of the issues that we have as a society is that even when we find out it's not true, we still make it true because we just felt better when it was true. And that baby oil thing, it doesn't really matter because if there were more women who were harmed like Cassie was in that video, that should be our main concern. Are the human beings that were affected, not the rooms that he has, not the baby oil, not any of that, but the harm that came to these individuals. So, you know, I always kind of, I like to keep my eye on the prize. I don't really get distracted by things on the outside because when it's all said and done, it really doesn't matter. Um, well, just to stay on the baby oil for a second, um, if they were seeking, let's say, civil suit to say pain and suffering, uh, the side of baby oil give them, you know, flashbacks. Technically, you could stay on the baby oil, right? <laughs> it, it, you know what? It, it, hey, in the next next show, I need a button to turn his <laughs> mic off. I need a button. I need a button to turn his 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 his, his, mic, his I mean, mic off. Man, look here. I mean, no, <laughs> no. Can't go down the baby no, aisle no, no more. No, 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 <laughs> no. I'm not even entertaining. You see how I say I don't entertain certain things? I'm not even entertaining that question. No. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Yeah, <laughs> uh, stay out of uh, Walmart baby aisle. Um. When it comes to his assets, you had just mentioned about assets being uh, like you as a lawyer, we're going to go after assets. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the fifty million, uh, Sean Combs had paid off his mansion on in Miami. He paid off the remaining eighteen million to own the mansion. He had a mortgage on it still. Uh, he paid off his mother's mansion just in case he has to put that up as well. Uh, if he does move his assets now that he owns them into either mother's name, friends, children's name, things of that nature. Um, Right now, of course, there's a lot more civil suits that have opened up against Sean Combs. Are those assets protected because he moved them out of his name? And how does one go about obtaining every asset? Do they look at from when the day the crime happened up until when the assets got moved out of his name? Or how does that work when it comes to seizing things you might have tried to get rid of or hide that showing that you don't own? Typically, courts look exactly at that, at they what they call a look back looking back to see when you made this transaction, what was the reason for this transaction, and was it potentially used to hide assets? You know, I always tell one of the, the 
the main things that always caught dope dealers up, right? I'm talking a lot about dope dealers today. Um, the whole thing about, I'm going to put it in my mama name. I'm going to get this car in my brother name. I'm going to do this in my sister name. Okay. The money came from you. So we're going to look back and we're going to grab all that stuff. Because they wouldn't have it if it wasn't for you. And so the federal government is very good at that. Very good. Yes. Yes. And so, you know, if it comes to making the federal government, because the federal government is going to come get their money too. They're not prosecuting this case for free. So all of that's going to be calculated as far as the time and resources that they spent to prosecute you. You got it. Let's go get this match. You know, let's go get this rolls. Let's sell all this stuff. Um, speaking of moving assets to children, um, during the raid, I think a few of his sons were arrested, but then released. Um, and we haven't heard anything really from the kids. Mm -hmm. um, and most recently, um, the twin, the twin girls got back on social media. And even in their video, they said like, hey, like, you know, we know we've been like not on social media, but we're back and we're blah, 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 blah. Do you think that these are good moves for the kids like hey get back on social media get back to like normal day-to-day -day things that you would be doing and kind of like pretending as if this is not happening not speaking on it do you think that's the right thing to do or that there should be some sort of setup for them as far as PR and what they should be doing and saying in the public eye you should always have a PR person in a situation like this you should you know because if if you do something that's great and something that can is favorable you need someone to get that information out there. As much as I love social media and everything that happens, uh, it's hit or miss, right? If it's something that's not in your algorithm or in your feed, you're not gonna receive it. So if I am a married mother of four kids and I'm 50 years old and I live in Wisconsin and, you know, Street Stars is not a site that you visited. Chances are you're not going to come up in that algorithm. If I'm not searching Sean Combs, that's something that's not going to come up in my algorithm. So how do I get that in front of people who may be potential jurors, but are not necessarily connected to the same social media chain? I need a PR person, someone to get that information out there. The kids being out there could be a good move. Because if they're out there showing that they're viable um, children who have not been harmed or tarnished by these accusations of these parties and things of that nature, it could shine a light on, okay, he, was he really a villain? Was this something that people just went to kind of like Astroworld, right? I'm not, I'm scared of heights, but I'm going to try this 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 roller coaster real quick, yeah. right? I just want to try it once. I just want to see. I don't. I really don't like crowds, but I'm going to the state fair because they got fried Oreos. I want to try that. And so, was there something there that 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 brought people there, rather than him just being this sinister person? And so, there's all kinds of avenues and ways to show that, and some of that might be through his kids. Shout out real street stars, nigga. Moolah. Hey.